everyone and welcome to a new tutorial. Let's start from scratch. I've already split the screen, I put the right screen to top viewer mode and on the left screen I already deactivated the backdrop tops. Let's press tab and we're going to add an out top and turn on the render flag. We're first going to create a rendering setup and later on we're going to create an instancing network. Let's press tab and we'll start by creating a sphere sub first. Right click on the out of the sphere and connect a geometry. Right click on the out of the geometry and while pressing shift we'll connect a camera and a light comp. Let's press tab and attach a render top which will automatically connect to the previous three nodes. Once we connect the render to the out, the sphere we created at the beginning of the network will appear on the top viewer. Great, now we have our core rendering network. Before we start with the instancing, let's go to the parameter window of the sphere sub and decrease the radius to about 0.03. Now let's start with the instancing. Press tab and add a grid sub. Now later on I'm going to do some transformations on the position data and if I do the transformations while in subs, this will be too much since all transformations on subs are processed in the CPU. Whereas if I convert the sub to tops, then the transformations will be more efficient since here all transformations are processed on the GPU. Now I'm going to attach an all sub first and I cannot directly transform from sub to top but I can do chop to chop first and then chop to top. On the parameter window of the chop to sop, we'll set the data format to RGB and we'll set the dimensions of the image layout to fit to square. Now let's click on the out of the chop to top and attach an all top. For clarity, I'm going to color the node red and rename it to pause for position. Now back to the geometry. In the parameter window, go to instance. This page provides the ability to create hardware instances of the geometry. In here, turn the instancing on and drag and drop our position nodes to the translate top of the geo. Since the instance data is supplied by a top, the top's RGB channels are going to be assigned to the instance attributes. So let's set R for translate X, G for translate Y and B for translate Z. To have a squared render, let's go to the render top and in the common tab of the parameter window we'll set the resolution to 1280 by 1280. To get a little closer to the spheres, I'm going to go into the camera and in the parameter window I'll increase the translate Z value. To have a black background, I will attach a transform right before the out top. In the parameter window, I'll set the alpha parameter to 1 and turn on comp over background color. Now let's go back to the beginning of our instancing network and in between the grid sop and the null, we will attach a new sop operator called the sprinkle. The sprinkle sop is used to generate points inside the surface or the volume of a sop. If we connect the sprinkle sop to the null, we'll get this effect on our image. Now the problem here is if we use the sprinkle top to do animations on a sop operator, we're going to have performance issues as the number of points increases. Let me demonstrate. To better see the points increasing, I'll first decrease the radius of the sphere. Then, in order to animate, let's attach a noise sop after the grid. So now we have the grid animated. If we go to the parameter window of the sprinkle and increase the number of points to 10,000, then we notice that the FPS also decreases. If we go even higher to let's say 50,000, then the FPS also goes all the way down to 12. So this is also the reason why we converted the grid sop in the beginning to tops. So let's get rid of the noise here and I'm going to select all the nodes and turn the viewer off to improve the FPS and I will decrease the number of points back to 10,000. So now we can animate our image in the top world. So let's right click here in the connecting line and add a displace top. We can displace here with anything, but for now I'm going to go with a simple noise. Here then we can play with the parameters to get a result we like. In our network, I'm going to select the tops, go into the common tab in the parameter window and set the pixel format to a 32-bit float. What this means is that each pixel of the top will have 32 bits of information for each of its R, G, B and A channels, allowing both negative and positive values. From here, you can go on and tweak the values again and once you've settled on an image, we'll go to the transform tab of the noise and animate on the translate Z by typing in abs time dot seconds times 0 0.001 and like so we have this cool atoms moving like animation from here we can go onto the geometry and decrease the camera distance to go closer we can also go to the light comp and changing the position of the lights can give us this interesting shadowy effect 
Okay, so here we're done with the first part and now we can add actually just any top and multiply to get interesting motions. So let's press tab and we'll add a movie file in top. In the connecting line between the render and the top, we'll attach a multiply top and in its second input, we'll connect the movie file in. And like so, we have our moving particles creating a banana shape. Now, for the next part, we want to create some audio reactive visuals. To start, I'll press tab and create a base comp. I'll first rename it to audio reactive, then I will scroll into the base, press tab and create an out top. Then I'll press tab and create a circle top. Let's connect the circle to the out and in the common tab of the circle top, let's change the resolution to 1280 by 1280. Great, now let's scroll out and let's attach the base to the multiply. And like so, we have the particles shaped as a circle. Let's scroll back in and in here, what I want to do is create a feedback network that is also audio reactive. So let's do this, let's go to the parameter window of the circle and set the fill alpha all the way down to zero. We'll increase the border width and change the border color to white. Now let's right click after the circle and we'll create a feedback. Right click after the feedback and attach a level. Right click after the level and create a transform. Lastly, let's create a composite after the transform, connect the circle to it and drag and drop the composite onto the feedback. Now from here, if we go to the transform and scale down, we see that our circle slowly gets filled up. To give a bit more dimension to the animation, we can go to the feedback and decrease the opacity just a bit. This will give us a tunnel-like effect and from here you can further modify the parameters until you're satisfied. But for now we have our feedback network. Now in order to make the whole thing audio reactive, we're going to right click after the transform and attach a displace top. On its second input we'll attach a noise. The displace weight is going to be 1 by default. So let's first bring it to 0 and from there we slowly increase it until we find a good spot. This will create the illusion of some texture in our animation. Let's go back to the noise next and toggle up the monochrome parameter to have some colorful noise. Now if we go back to the feedback, we notice that every time we click on the pulse, the animation starts new from the beginning. And we want this pulse to be audio reactive along with the displace weight animating between different values. So every time it pulses, the animation starts again but with a different displace weight. Ok, let's go down here and create an audio file in. This is the default touch designer sound, so if we right click on the out and attach an audio device out, then we can actually hear it. I will bypass it for now and we're going to open the palette and under tools we're going to drag and drop the audio analysis. Right click on the audio analysis next and attach an old chop. Now here on the audio analysis we can change the parameters to fit the reactiveness on your audio more accurately. But for now we'll only concentrate on the kick detection so right after the null we're going to attach a select chop and in the parameter window under channel name we'll select kick detection as the channel we want to keep. And now for the next step we're going to combine both these networks. So I will move the bottom nodes to the beginning and my goal here is to reset the feedback with this kick. So let's drag and drop the null tool into the pulse parameter of the feedback and select chop reference and this will do it. Next we can go to the audio analysis and decrease the value of the low smooth. If we still feel that the animation is too strong, then what we can do is we can right click after the select chop and add a count chop. This counts the number of times a channel crosses a trigger. In the count tab, we set the limit to loop mean max. Set the minimum to 0 and the maximum to 3 and then reset. So now instead of the feedback resetting every time a kick is detected, we have the feedback reset once per 3 detected kicks. Ok, so up to now we achieved the wanted effect with the feedback but we also want the animation to have a new displace weight every time we have the 3 kicks. To achieve this, let's first right click after the count and add a limit. 
The limit chop can limit the values of the input channels to be between a minimum and a maximum. In the parameter window, set the type to zigzag and the minimum to zero, so the output channel is going to bounce between zero and one. Now let's click on the out of the node tool and we'll attach a chop execute. Let's split the second screen top to bottom and set the new screen to text port and dots mode. Drag the chop execute onto the text port and select open dot. Now in here we're going to deactivate every function except for the off to on. In the text port we'll also delete all the other comment lines and leave only the off to on function. So in here first I will import random in order to randomize the values of the display's weight and then we'll delete the last line here and I'll type in op which is to reference the displays operator. So let's type the name of the operator, which is displays1, and then dot par to indicate that we want to access a parameter, and the parameters we want are the displays weight x and the displays weight y. So let's type the displays weight x first, and then dot val for value, and this is going to be equal uniform dot random, which is just a function of random that returns a new random number between two values. I will set these two values to be minus 0.0. .0 one three and zero point zero one three. I'll copy the line and then I'll paste it underneath and replace the X with a Y while the segment here stays the same. And this is the effect we wanted. Now, in the same way we created this effect, we can also animate the radius of the circle top in the beginning. So let's say we want the minimum value of the radius to be 0 0.1 and the maximum value to be 0 0.4. So we do the same procedure first up and then the name of the operator we want to access, which is circle one, and then dot par dot radius x dot val, and this is going to be equal to random dot uniform, and then in the brackets, the first value is going to be the minimum of 0 0.1, and the second value 0 0.4 is the maximum. We copy the line, and instead of x, we say y. And now we also have the radius of the circle changing with the music. And that was it. You can of course go back and keep making changes on the post-processing, like adding a level to control the brightness, or other interesting effects. Try this out yourself, be creative, have fun, and if you have any questions or recommendations, leave them below. We're trying to release a new tutorial every Friday, and if you have any suggestion on something you'd like to see, please let us know in the comments or send us a message on Instagram and we'll try to recreate it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing to the channel and turning on the bell in order to get notified every time we bring up a new tutorial. And I will see you next Friday. Until then, have a great time. Bye!